All right, so let's throw a little weirdness on this. We're going to graph an absolute value. Okay, what do absolute value bars do? They just turn everything yeah. positive. They make everything positive. So if something's negative, it becomes positive. If something's positive, it stays positive. So if I look at just any graph, let's just say a parabola graph. Right? There's a parabola. If I did absolute value of a parabola, what would happen is this section here would do like that. And then it would disappear from there. Right? So it creates that type of shape. That's all that's happening here. So if you just imagine your toe bot and bow top, right? So let's just look at a toe bot real quick. T-O-B-O-T. -O -O all right, so if we did that, right, the graph would look normally like this. All that's going to happen is this section is going to invert. So it's going to, instead of being toe bot, it's going to be toe tot, right? So it's going to go like that, jump, jump. It, and it makes those jumps. It doesn't, it doesn't go like, like this. It, it goes like that. All right, so it jumps. So um, just imagine that happening, and that's the proper way to draw it. So you want to hit those sharp curves. So go to the top to zero, back to a top to zero, back to a top, like that. So you want to get those really sharp turns when you're graphing. That's all absolute value bars are going to do to one of these things. Um, if there's a minus in front of the absolute value bars, once you get that, that everything on top, it's going to shift everything to the bottom, right? So again, you can get an idea of where dots are supposed to go and then just draw it properly for that. So if, imagine the absolute value bars aren't there to begin with. So if I was doing this normally, I would say B is equal to positive 1, right? Positive 1 is greater than 0, so my normal scenario would be top first. So toe bot would be my normal scenario, right? The absolute value bars make the negative turn to a positive, so the B changes to a T. That's all the absolute value bar is going to do to me. And if I had the other one, if, if it was negative cosine of X inside the absolute value bar, so if it looked like this, now B is equal to negative 1, right? Which is less than 0, which gives me the bow top, right? What does that do? The B's change to T's, right? And what, what do we get? Toe tot again. Uh, so it doesn't matter. If, if all the stuff's happening inside the bars, it's going to be top, 0, top, 0, top. It's just what it's going to be. If it was sine instead of cosine, now it's going to be 0, top, 0, top, 0, right? O to to. No matter which one you have, right? So again, keep that in mind. What does the absolute value bar affect? And what it's going to do is it's going to make the bottom thing pop up to a top every time. So wherever a bottom occurred in the original scenario, change it to a top. Uh, as far as the other thing, C is equal to 1, which gives me a period of normal 2 pi over 1, which means I'm going to go up. Making a new word. Go up. Most right goop. Go up by 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2, on the x-axis. So again, whatever the period is divided by 4, reduce the fraction. That tells you what your x scale is. So we're going up by pi over 2 on the x-axis. We're starting at x equals 0. Uh, we have a c value of 1. I kind of like the second dash there, so I'm going to go y at a half scale here. And again, if you just put a single dash there, if you want to number, if you want to scale this and put a 1 over here and a negative 1, that's fine. I mean, if you want to kind of pick and choose where you want to put things, that's fine. But um, if you are going to use a scale on the y-axis, just make sure that the dash you're, you're marking is the right one for the scale you use. So 0.5, so 0.51, top, 0. And again, the bottom flips up to the top, 0, top. And notice, again, that the tendency of people first doing this is they want to do these nice, smooth little things like that. That's not the right way to draw an absolute value graph. The correct way is to hit each zero like a ball is bouncing. So imagine a ball bouncing with no friction, continually bounces the same height every single time. That's what's happening there. All right? And just like that, we've got our graph done and everything is good about it.